Welcome to episode 15, I think it is, of uh, Let's Build a Honda. Um, <clears throat> since the last time, uh, I made a little horn bracket here. Just uh, I've got a just a small break, so I, I broke the, the aluminum uh, just to create a new mount for the stock horn. Um, this bike is road legal in BC, so it has to have all that crap on there. Um, been working on the uh, skid plate as of late. Uh, the tanks are all done. This is the uh, Gates Barricade fuel line that I was talking about. You can see it's a lot, I don't know if you can see or not, but it's it's a lot stiffer um, than, uh, than regular low pressure fuel line. Um, I don't think I've been doing a lot else other than that. I've been busy with a few other things. Um, so I haven't had a lot of chance to work on this bike. Uh, I'm just going to take you over to the bench here. So what I had to do on the mount was these two guys are the original ears um, that were, sorry, the paint's just drying right now. Um, I had to replace them and I don't know if you can see what I did was I actually just uh, fish plated a, a second piece on top of it. It's just tigged in place. My welding isn't amazing so uh, I just left it the way it was um, yeah, of course put a thumbprint in it but anyways um, that's how much I had to widen it out to get it to to fit properly um, in the next video I'll show you show you how it mounts up um, the uh, I've got the toolbox in place for now for the exhaust uh, the exhaust, the reason I, I did that was, uh, I think what I'm going to do is turn that into a fuel tank. Um, it uh, shouldn't be too bad, it just uh, the, the upper and lower mounts, now that they're located, we can uh, strip the, the coating off and TIG them in place and uh, uh, TIG the holes closed um, and then go from there, the bolt holes that is. Um, I've set up my uh, Vortec for this exhaust. I've uh, just been playing with it a little bit. So I'm on map eight, which is the uh, torque and trail map for uh, a full Yosh pipe, I believe. And I'm running the, the settings at five, six, seven. Uh, I also followed the, the video that's going around right now from Champion Adventures and reset the TPS. I don't know if it was off. It's, uh, it's not like other brands where you can tell whether it's been uh, whether it was off or not um, that's about it the, the skid plate bolts up now um, it will be bolted up here in the next uh, few minutes and I'll show you exactly what it looks like when it's all together um, there's I guess that's about it really about uh, I haven't mounted, what I'm gonna do for uh, the tower, to finish off the tower, is it's going to be its own series to do the, uh, the uh, navigation and uh, all that. It's, it's gonna be its own. Um, <clears throat> so we're just about, and same with the suspension. The suspension, it's gonna be its own uh, little series on uh, how to take it apart, how to put it back together, all that fun stuff. Um, that's about it. Um, we do have another rear fender for it that is going to streamline that a lot. The only one thing that makes me want to keep this one here though is that it's got a nice finished inside to it. Um, so that might stay uh, for now. I'll probably pull the plate to race it but um, leave that bracket there for the most part. So we'll be back in a few minutes with the uh, tanks and skid plate on and You'll see how that looks. Okay, so here we go. The skid plate's now bolted up. Um, I'm just gonna take you in close here for a second. You can see how much I've had to open it up. Um, it's 16th inch metal and it actually took an eighth of an inch. So two pieces of 16th on the outside of the edge of what they were, um, uh, what they built. That's what I had to go out to. Um, I haven't put, I just realized I painted it and haven't put the lower support on yet. That's just going to go across the frame. 
Um, I'll, I'll get that to that in the next couple of days or next day or so. Um, overall, the skid plate is sort of fitting. Well, it's, it's fitting as good as it's going to get. It's going to be nice and strong uh, once we get the tank underneath it. That's that's going to be an adventure in itself. Now you'll see I've got blue tape over all of this. Uh, the reason is is that you can see there there's less than an inch between the shifter and the back of the skid plate. And um, I don't know if you remember what it looked like with the skid plate off, but really the, the tank ends there and then it's just the fuel pump below it. So if you look at Simone Agassi's uh, RS Honda kit, and if you look at some of the other bikes that are running uh, twin tanks on their Hondas, um, this isn't there. So I don't know whether they tried to increase rigidity. There actually is a forming line in there, like a mold line. Uh, I'm gonna get, I was gonna follow that, but I think I'm actually gonna leave a little bit more material. What I plan to do is kind of follow this line down over and I'll, I'll take away this ridge and then I'm also going to, sorry, take away this ridge and I'm also gonna lower this just a little bit. Um, just because, like if you look at it this way, that's not even, right now it's it's about two inches to the bottom of the shifter. My boot's thicker than two inches, so I need some room in there. Um, going over to the other side, it's the same idea. Um, if we look at, uh, that's even got less distance. That's, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just, it's about five eighths of an inch between the, the skid plate and the brake pedal, which means, yeah, you're never gonna overshoot it, but you're always gonna be braking with just the tip of your foot. So I'd rather have a little bit more room there. So again, we're gonna pick up on this body line or the tank mold line and come down and around. And because I need both hands for this, I'm, I'm going to uh, put you down and I'll, I'll show you the end result. Okay, so skid plate is now back on after being modified. Um, this is the back side of the brake side. Um, I think the biggest advantage is gonna be now it's not gonna trap hot air. Uh, this, this will allow a lot, it, it can breathe a lot more now. Um, I was pretty concerned about all the air, the hot air that was going to get trapped in there. You can see here the old mold line. Originally they had a lot less than this here. So we'll leave that like that for now. I'm, I'm going to trim this side down a bit and like just um, mold it a bit and get it to look a little bit prettier. This is just the rough cut. Um, I'm a lot happier with this now. Um, there's, there's a, just a lot more clearance. It is taking a couple minutes to get used to the look because I've been looking at it the other way for quite a while. And we'll come over here and you can see the back of the fuel pump is exposed to my boot, but if you look at it this way, it's, you know, it's still really protected. It's, it's something's gonna have to come around here and hit it. Um, I, I'm not crazy about the look. Uh, I remember when I first looked at the RS Honda kit, they've got their fuel pump in the same spot. Their tank is a lot different. It actually goes straight up here, uh, wraps around this this area a lot more. So yeah, my hands are all carboned up from uh, cutting the carbon. Um, I, I'm pretty happy with it now. I think uh, like it gives me a lot clearer view of, of what's going on in here too. Now you can really see that that gap that has to be filled. There's there's no way I can leave that. Um, I've got a couple ideas in mind. I... Hey guys, so just a continuation on here uh, from last night. Um, I've made up a cardboard template that uh, is going to fill the gap between the uh, the frame and the uh, the skid plate. Right now, there's like. A little, little bit of a gap in there. Um, I'm okay with that. I'll, um, this is just a template. It should allow me to to, uh, to be fairly accurate with cutting. And uh, sorry, we're gonna 
go over to the other side here. <clears throat> there is a top on it right now. I haven't put a bottom on it. Um, it's not going to hold three liters, but uh, it may hold one or two. Um, regardless, I don't know if the, I'm actually going to put anything in it. Um, it is, it's more to uh, take up the gap uh, between the frame and the, and the um, skid plate. So what's going to happen in there is uh, I'm going to put a floor on it as well. So it'll take up the, uh, uh, take up the impact. Um, it will be made so eventually it, it, I could put spigots on it and, and have um, uh, put uh, liquid in it. But for right now, it's just going to stay empty. Uh, I kind of cheated a bit by not going beyond the weld, so it'll have a nice even spot to grab to. Uh, I just use the the frame as the template. Um, so what I started out with, I'll show you here. What I started out with was this upper piece is a direct trace of the frame. And on this side, it is actually a direct trace of the skid plate. So if you take those two, you just make them thinner than they need to be. And then you put them together and then trace that out, then you can end up with a single piece. Um, just for ease of lifting it up there, I've got it hooked to the, uh, the skid, like just taped to the skid plate right now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'll make a box out of it again. I'll put the bottom back on, uh, do another test fit, this time with the end caps. I can see here that I'm gonna run into clearance issues with the, uh, with the mount. So this is actually gonna come down and be 90 degrees there. Um, that should make things a little bit easier to fit. And then uh, I think what I'm gonna do is actually gonna clamp it to the frame. So it's gonna have well, anyways, you'll see what I'm going to do. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work yet. So we'll, um, we'll just leave that for now. And uh, that's about it for the skid plate for this time. And uh, hopefully next time we'll have uh, an aluminum tank in there. Okay, so one last test fit. This time I had actually uh, mounted it up to the, uh, to the frame because that's the way it's going to be sitting. Um, I've got a nice little gap there uh, between the uh, between the cardboard template and the uh, and the skid plate. What uh, what that's going to give me is a little bit of room to put some anti vibration uh, foam in there just to keep everything happy. Um, I guess that's about it. The next time, I, I know I said this last time, but hopefully we'll get uh, next time you'll see at least some of the pieces in aluminum.